No Bluffing Podcast, No Bluffing Boxing. The boys, we back at it again. JJ in the building, Rashad back in the building. We're going to get to it. Uh, we had a, a big boxing event. Went down. Where was they? They was in Dubai. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, La- yeah. Hey, hey. No, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. That's not the Saudi same? Arabia. No, 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 no. Where is, it's all United Emirates. It's all United Arab Emirates. It is. It is. I'm pretty sure, ain't it? Yeah. I ain't never been to Dubai, so. Oh, no. I ain't been. I think it is all the I same. I want to go. Hey, I'm scared of the flight. It's all Emirates, bro. Yes, you, it is. You play football. We're going to give you a pass. <laughs> 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 is that the same? I'm going to look that up. We're going to have to look that up. Gonna... UAE? UAE? I'm yeah. not sure. I'm not sure. It, might, it, it may be. It may be. Look, it may be. Saudis, all I hear is a lot of money. Yeah. When I hear it's a boxing event over there. It sounds like a lot of money. Getting That's, A-Rab money. <laughs> they got money and they blow. They spend it too. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell oh, yeah. me. That's a fact. So we had we had a big boxing event over there. A um, lot, of, lot of great matches. We got to get to the right, right to the shits, man. Deontay Wilder looked horrible. Uh, y'all I'm watch you the go. fight. I'm letting you go. What, what'd you, you think, go JJ? I, I think he's like a, he's a very unique boxer. Obviously, everybody's talking about the power. But the thing that jumped out to me was everybody kept clowning for his legs. And I'm <laughs> looking. Cause, his legs were? Yeah, because you, you be talking about lower half. like, And yeah. I feel like your power come from the ground. Like, that's yeah. where anything, football, anything. You want to lift something, you got to, you know what I'm saying, bend your knees. Put the, so I'm seeing his legs. I'm like, how he's standing through these fights like mm-hmm. that that that's going to take pay, you know what I'm saying that's going to help you get you through the match so mm-hmm. that i mean if you known for your power you're not landing punches it's tough yeah i mean you know like with fighters man like a lot of fighters don't have big legs like they have big thighs mm-hmm. like football y'all got crazy mm-hmm. legs y'all got calves you know what i mean y'all got thighs we cut so much weight that it's like a lot of us don't have huge legs unless you like naturally built like we just progress mm-hmm. he built with like big legs but Wilder, man, he used them skinny ass legs he had because all he did was move. Yeah. He didn't throw no punches. Yeah. It's like I, I'm, I'm, I was just lost because you know Malik Scott. That's one of my childhood friends. You know, trainer. What I mean? That's that's trainer for Deontay Wilder. Yeah, for sure. And Malik, I, he was cool too. You took me to the gym. I got a chance yeah, to meet for him. Sure. No, so no, no, no. He, that's, he was that's, cool guy. That's my bro, man. You know what I mean? He know the game. He understand it. I just feel like you are what you are. You know what I'm saying? It's like a, any any athlete when you. 34, 35 years old, like. How old is he? He, how old is he? 35, 35, 35 oh, I think. You can't reinvent the wheel. Like, let's be real. Deontay was never a fundamentally sound boxer, was never a pretty boxer. He was a puncher. I, I'm like, when you train a guy like Deontay Wilder, you can't teach him a whole lot this late in the game. Mm. All you can do is work on his form and the basics. And I felt like watching him move and had his old school style, and not even old school style, but move and change his whole way of fighting. Even though they said, you know, Father Tom caught up, he couldn't pull the trigger. I just never saw him move like that. I never seen him moving, but he was circling the ring. You know, like he couldn't really pull the trigger. He he wouldn't let his hands go. You know what it reminded me of? And I kind of thought about this. Maybe he was in wars with Tyson Fury. Mm -hmm. Three wars. And I don't know what, like, did that take everything out of him? Like, like those was three brutal fights. Brutal. They were tough. And, and uh, uh, <clears throat> like, we don't know how much that took out of his boxing life. Like, it was a lot of punishment. He gave a lot of punishment, but he took a lot of punishment from a man that's much bigger. No, for sure. You know what I'm saying? For and, sure. And I, I don't know how much did that take out of him. Like, that's another thing. You said much bigger. At the beginning, they was like standing at six foot six or whatever, two hundred fifteen. Pa- I'm like <laughs> two fifteen. I'm no, like what? Like, but he just lean, dude. I've like been two eighteen before, yeah, for sure. And I'm like six feet. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, that's like lean. Like, right? He lean, but he always been at that weight. The thing but, is, but man. Then the Fury fight, he tried to go up. He gained. He, he went up to like two thirty five, two forty, and, 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 and he, he couldn't, couldn't move. Hold it. But the Damn. thing was like. Some people just gifted with power. Like, like they just got it. He just one of them dudes, his power is through the roof. But, like, when I watch them train, like, as far as the videos I see, and I see him moving, I'm just like, Malik, love him to death. Like I said, it's my bro. He know the game. But it's like with Deontay, a guy like that, work on his jab, show him his distance, teach him his distance, drill it, straight right hand, double jab, straight right hand, Occasional hooks, occasional uppercuts, 
work on his range. That's it. I'm not about to be taking a Deontay Wilder, who's a knockout artist, and make him a mover around the ring. And I'm also say this too. Let's let, let's get some credit to Joseph Parker. He fought a like, hell of a fight. He fought a hell of a fight. He wasn't no slouch. Mm -mm. Joseph Parker only lost what two fights. He had a title. He wasn't no bum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Deontay came out there trying to box with Joseph Parker, and I think that's the wrong thing to do. You are not a boxer. That was never your game. Go in there. Punch him. <laughs> Knock him out. Yeah, punch him. Like, like, like Deontay, you swim. Let your hands Everybody go. Everybody get on you for the windmills, the wild punches, whatever. But guess what? You done damn near knocked everybody out with yeah. him. Like, you done, you done knocked everybody but Tyson Fury out. You had him out. You and knocked he him down, up, too. He came up like the Undertaker. Like, yeah. he thought the fight was over. Like, yeah. he came up like, yeah. yeah. Like, go back to that. Like, that's what made you you. Like, continue that. Like, I understand Malik and his knowledge of the game and his discipline and you know, he was taught by old school great Fred Jenkins from Philly, man. And Malik was a great fighter, man. Great amateur. You know, didn't live up to his potential in a lot of people's eyes. But, you know, the boxing game can can be tricky to a lot of people, man. But Malik did very well. You know, and I'm proud of my bro. But, like, at the end of the day, I just feel like, I, I feel like Deontay should have, like, Deontay is who he is. If he mm -hmm. caught Deontay at 30, I would be like, okay, he got time. Let's transform his whole style, mm. but not right now. Yeah, so who's who's like a besides Fury? Because I watch him fight; he can box. Who's like a technical heavyweight? Because because I watched a few of them other fights, and it looked just like a slugfest. Uh, like uh, no, for uh, sure, uh, that's how uh, most of them. Uh, are. Yes, oh, uh, Usyk is 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 Usyk? very. He's yeah, a very Usyk good is. boxer. Two time uh, what? Two time gold medalist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two time gold medalist. One medalists. or two time. I'm not sure. I, I, think I even think even though you know he didn't took some losses, Anthony Joshua can box. I, I saw very him. Yeah, he can box. Yeah, very he can box. good. Very um, good. But it's just That's what I'm saying. Like this seemed like the bigger because yeah. I look. I, I one of them fights on that car. It was like just some big sloppy looking dude. Oh yeah, just just nasty. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, nasty. yeah, yeah. It looked like yeah. he didn't even train for real. Yeah. Like, but you know, I I felt like I felt like Wilder. He should have been more front foot dominant. It was way too much movement. I just, I've never seen him not let his hands go. And what it reminded me of, honestly, it reminded me of Adrian Broner after he took that first loss to Madonna. To Madonna. Gunshot, basically gunshot. After that fight, Damn. he would not let his hands go. But Deontay, no, no, no. I'm gonna tell you something. Deontay fought Robert Hellenis. Like he yeah. fought him in New York. Mm -hmm. Let his hands go, knocked him out. It was an yeah. early knockout, but yeah. you saw an offensive minded, aggressive guy. I don't know what the game plan was with Joseph Parker, but I'm gonna tell you this, it wasn't the right game plan. What, like the movement with Joseph Parker, I, I just didn't see it. What do the long and JJ, you could kind of speak to this. What does a uh, uh, a layoff, because he was out of the ring. How long was he out for? What a two years. About a year? No, about a year. A year. Because I went to the I went to that fight in New York, so I would say that's about a year. About a year. So so what does like not staying active do to a fighter? Just like all right, like when he went when he first went to camp, he yeah. summer he was, <laughs> look look summer me and him legs was like this, we like, out kicking it. Yeah. First day of camp, he get me, man. I got the noodle legs. Like, I'm, out here, <laughs> I'm out here slipping and falling, man. I'm, I'm yeah. wondering like where my game go. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Like Space Jam, like for real. They stole your talent, bro. I'm yeah. thinking, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> but it take reps, so yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like, what do like a, a layoff like when a, when a, especially an older fighter. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like most of the time, I feel like the more active fighter, they fighting two, sometimes three, t three, three fights a year is a lot. Yeah, but for the most part, now. guys getting two in a year. So yeah. when a guy fight one time and then don't get back in the ring for a whole year, what does a layoff like that do for a fighter? I mean, I think it's more of a mental thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I think, of course, physically, some stuff would be off. Your timing may be off. Number one, I always found was my distance. Like my distance was off. Like I'm quite sure you can relate. Like if you trying to cover somebody mm. or whatever, your judgment mm. like uh, uh, of somebody like trying to cover them. Or like can tracking be the off. ball. That, yeah, that it, can get off for sure. It's your distance. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Your mm. range, your distance, it can be off. But I think it's more of a mental thing. Like after you're able to adjust and break through it, you can be all right. Like I know some fighters, man, that come back from it like they never left. And mm -hmm. some guys, you see a big change. I think, I think a lot of it's mental though. So when we look at like trainers like Malik Scott, do... Do do you think trainers get stuck into like, all right, this is the way I train. This is the way I teach fighters to fight versus adjusting to the talent and the fighter fight. that you have? I think a lot of fighters do. You know what's so crazy? Like Customato. I'm going to use um, Customato who trains Tyson. Like if you look back in history, like Customato's fighters, they all fought the same. They had the peekaboo style. Um, we're talking about, of course, Mike Tyson. Um, man, you know how you get them brain farts. I fought for a living, so forgive me. Mm -hmm. But Floyd Patterson. 
Floyd Patterson was the same way. Fought just like Mike Tyson, but smaller. Now you talk about guys like um, Marquez, the Marquez. Um, Marquez, man, um, Nacho Beristein. All his fighters fought with this weird, like a weird way of holding their hands. Their punches were exactly <laughs> the same. Like old school fighters train all their fighters identical. Okay. I think as the game has changed and evolved, just like athlete, or like any athlete, like you got to take what you have and you got to be able to take them, work, like focus on what they're really, really good at because that's really them. Work on their weaknesses, but at the same time, if you continue to drill and drill and try to make them something they're not, you're stripping them of everything that they are. You know what I mean? You can perfect, perfect their flaws and just the best way you can. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, their strengths are their strengths. So you can't turn a power puncher into a slick boxer. You can't turn a slick boxer into a power puncher. Mm -mm. It's not going to happen. You know what I mean? It's like a running back. Yeah. You can't turn a power running back into a Barry Sanders. Yeah. It's not going to happen. That's yeah. You are who you are. Your gifts are your gifts. And I think a lot of fighters get stuck on, or a lot of trainers get stuck on, I want to show them this. All you can do is teach the basic, the basic fundamentals, the basics to a fighter, and their, and their attributes, what make them special, it kind of blossoms. But at the same time, I see so many guys trying to teach fighters to do something that you can physically see they're not capable of doing. Mm -hmm. And then and then it's like, okay, so the Wilder, he he loses. I don't even I didn't have him winning a round. He got sweat. He lost 12-0, oh. didn't he? He lost every round. He lost every round. I think one judge, I think two judges gave him a round, I'm not sure. Or, or maybe they, they maybe he lost every single round and one judge gave him like I think I think he ended up having a 10-8 round. You know what mm. I mean? Like it was Damn. bad. It was like bad. A fighter of his magnitude to lose like that. It's embarrassing. I mean, it's like it's the same way we just lost to Devin. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sweat. Same yeah. way, but you don't see Deontay Wilder losing a fight like that. Right. Like, so what happened next though? Like, so so I feel it, like he gotta find a, a chump to beat up on to say like he got to steal me. You know? Because okay, so he signed to fight Anthony Joshua, right? Now I don't think he want that. Now, Bro, now look, that fight should have happened a long that time. That yeah, fight was supposed to happen five, six years ago. But right? that's what's wrong with boxing. Like we get all these fans talking shit, talking about boxing, don't have a clue. But we love y'all because we need y'all support, mm -hmm. and the fighters <clears throat> do too. But at the end of the day, like so many fights are way past their prime. Let's be real. And Bud and Earl Spence should have happened years long ago. Before, like Floyd Mayweather, Pacquiao yeah. should have happened long before it did. Like. Guys wait until they lose. Like now you got Ryan Garcia calling Devin out. But when guys are undefeated, they're so scared to take them chances. But once they get that loss, it's like, oh, now I want to fight everybody. We got robbed out of a wilder, a wilder, a wilder Joshua fight. Joshua Wilder. You know, you know what I'm saying? We that got was robbed. a big fight. That would have been probably, it was a that huge was the fight. Biggest, that probably it was, was huge the biggest fight in boxing at that time. It was huge. But sometimes the anticipation makes the you know what I'm saying? The value go up, but it does. But right. in situations like this, now y'all both now, don't lost. nobody want to watch that. Nobody, don't nobody can. Yeah, don't nobody, nobody can. Now. Let's be real. Even if they won the fight, even even Joshua won his fight, even if Wilder won, it ain't what it was. I don't want to no, see it's it. Not, it's not. It's not what it once was. And it's like, like when you become a superstar, and like I was arguing, maybe we'll make the phone call. I'm not sure because it's East Coast time is late. But we've been having luck. My boy, who's part of um Javante's camp, we've been talking about boxing and how this goes and he's been arguing about our views and how we feel but the thing is when you reach a certain plateau you can't fucking lose mm -hmm. like prime example Javante you're superstar if you lose a fight to Devin or whoever you're still a superstar yeah you're still gonna get the bag Wilder Joshua, they were still gonna get the bag, win or lose. Might get more. Exactly. Cause cause he took the fight. Like rematch. They got everything they wanted to a see. Trilogy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But if you lose to somebody else, now yeah. that fight ain't as big. It's like no, the college it's football not. playoff. It's not exactly. It's like the college it's football not. playoff. For sure. Bama lost. They still in it. Cause it's they lost to, you know what I'm saying? Like For sure. It's crazy. But yeah, that's how it is, man. They gotta And, take and then advantage. you think about you think about the amount of money. That, that has they been blew. lost. They yeah. lost, bro. They they lost probably fifty six million dollars a piece. And this, this is the thing that I don't just think because they both took a pride thing. No. Well, at it, one it, point it was a pride thing because Deontay Wilder turned it down because he felt like they was playing him in the beginning with the negotiations. So he was like <clears throat> on some fuck y'all type shit. I'm gonna say this though. Think about it like this: If any of these superstars fight each other at that point in their careers, there's not another fight 
or two, they're going to take after that that's going to get them as much money. Mm -mm. So if it's a money thing, let's be real. You're not going to make it fighting the BNC level fighters right after you skip that superstar to fight. Uh -huh. You might as well get it out the way. That's not a blemish. It, whoever loses, you lose to another star. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your star power is still up here. All you got to do is go out and put on a great performance. Yeah. You can't lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's the media that's hyping this, keeping your O or whatever, but I'm going to say something. Everybody blames Floyd, but I'm going to be honest. I'm going to stop blaming Floyd and letting everybody blame Floyd because when Floyd was pretty boy, Man, we got to get to it because he fought everybody. Yeah. <laughs> he fought everybody. Money Mayweather? Yeah, he cherry picked. Yeah, he picked and chose. He was 38, 39 at that time, 37, 38 even, at that time. He, he was old be, at that time. He didn't beat Oscar De La Hoya until he was in his 30s and became a superstar. But before that, he earned the right. So let's be real. He protected this old late in his career, but early on, Man, he threw caution to the wind. But some of the best fighters that we still talk about to this day as the greatest, they don't have an O. None of them do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like yes. None of them do. So None I don't know do. why that's the standard. Like I think getting your chicken and, and showing you the man should be the standard. And like, Floyd Mayweather, like, I'm going to say this. Like, you were quick to tell fighters to stop trying to do the, you know what I mean, your style of fighting. Stop trying to fight with their hands down. Why don't you tell them the truth? Tell them the truth. Just like you did with that, tell them. Take your route. Take the pretty boy route first. Earn it. Then after that, do the Money Mayweather route because they already did it. They already got there. Mm -hmm. But you're not telling them that. You 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 showing these fighters, like these fighters aren't really, they don't, they don't have the knowledge in the history. They're looking at what you did late in your career. Because mm -hmm, they're younger. Yeah, because they're younger. They're looking at what you did late in your career thinking that's the way to go. But you got to break it down to them the same way you do your fighting style. Let them know, no, 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 no. I earned that right. Yeah. This is the route I went before that. Yeah.